celestial organisations with unimaginable power determined to protect the universe from the actions of wayward time travellers are popular in fiction. But could the universe really protect itself from time travellers? Let's find out more. I release a new science video each Friday, so if you enjoy them, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Some solutions of the equations of general relativity allow for what are called closed timelike curves. In order to be able to picture what one of these looks like, let us imagine a ball rolling round a circular track. After completing one circuit of the track, the ball has returned to its original place in space. However, if I plot time on the y-axis, we can see that although the ball has returned to the same position in space, because time has moved forward, it hasn't returned to the same point in space-time. In a closed timelike curve, the ball will be able to return not just to the same point in space, but also to the same point in time. This would, however, break causality. In normal space-time, because time only flows in one direction, causes have effects. Dropping a mug will cause it to hit the floor and usually break. In a closed timelike curve, because our ball returns not just to the same point in space, but also to the same point in time, cause doesn't necessarily lead to effect. It is then theoretically possible for civilizations with enough power to fold space-time in such a way that these closed timelike curves exist therefore allowing time travel. Wormholes appear to be one way in which closed timelike curves can happen. This could however lead to some rather unwanted paradoxes, such as the grandfather paradox. In this paradox, I go back in time and kill my grandfather before my father is even born. This means that my father is never born, which means that I'm never born. And it would be simple if that's where it ended. However, it isn't. Because I'm not born, I can't go back in time to kill my grandfather. And so, I am born. Which means that I can go back in time to kill him. Which means I'm never born. Which means that, well, I'm sure you get the idea that this would be a very bad idea. And would lead to this never-ending loop of this event happening and not happening simultaneously. Another problematic paradox that may occur is the bootstrap paradox a common theme in science fiction. The problem of the bootstrap paradox can be exemplified by this theoretical situation. One day I receive a visitor. It's me from the future who's travelled back in time in my time machine. I hand myself the plans for how to build a time machine. These plans then allow me to build it, and I can go back in time to give myself the time machine blueprints. This then raises a question of how did I figure out how to build the time machine? These paradoxes are generally considered to be not very good for the universe. Stephen Hawking in the 1990s wrote a paper in which he theorised about what he called the chronology protection conjecture. In it he used a metaphorical device called a chronology protection agency. He never actually suggested that an organisation of super powerful time police actually existed, he said that the universe would protect itself from time travel by making closed timelike curves impossible, thus eliminating the possibility of these paradoxes occurring. Essentially, he said that time travel on any macro scale was impossible, and the universe wouldn't allow it. Any time machine that was made would destroy itself the instant it was turned on. And it does seem like he may have had a point, as the distinct lack of time travellers and the ancestor murdering way he would attest to. In fact, Stephen Hawking threw a party for time travellers on the 28th of June 2009. He even had champagne and finger food. He only released the invites to the party after the event. If time travel was possible, then surely some time travellers would like some champagne and the chance to have a chat with Professor Hawking. Alas, the only person to actually attend the party was Stephen himself. Sounds a bit like one of my parties. Other physicists have come up with alternate ideas, but they all point to the same principle, that you can't go back in time and change history. One of them involves the many worlds hypothesis. 
This states that if you were able to travel backwards in time, you would in fact not just travel through time, but also through realities, and you would end up in an alternate reality. Here you would be free to act in any way you wanted, as your own history is protected from your actions. If you did happen to kill your grandfather, it would just be your alternate self that would be subjected to an eternity of non-existence. Another idea called the Novikov Self-Consistency Conjecture, developed by Russian physicist Igor Novikov, would apply only in a universe where alternate realities did not exist. This idea has no other selves to fall back on and would protect the universe if time travel didn't take you back to a different reality, but instead took you back to your own past. This conjecture states that any action that would cause an event that would bring about a paradox would have a probability of zero, in other words it would be impossible. This would effectively limit the free will of any time travellers to actions that wouldn't cause a paradox. In effect, they would become part of history, a history that's already happened. They would be unable to change events. A limit to your free will isn't such an outrageous idea though. Physics limits your free will every day. You may want to walk through a wall, but physics has other ideas and prevents you from exercising your free will on that matter. If a sufficiently advanced civilization was able to bend space-time in order to allow time travel, would time then just become another dimension that it was possible to move through, just as we can, with relative ease, move through the three physical dimensions of space? If this was the case, would the concept of past, present and future become meaningless? If we are talking here about being unable to travel into the past to change it, would the notion of past even exist? Just as we can see ahead of us in spatial dimensions, would such beings be able to see the future and past as just other dimensions? And if the future and past were just additional dimensions, what would that mean for free will? If you can see what will happen in the future, then all actions must have already happened in order for them to exist in that temporal dimension. Here, I'm afraid, we're getting a little bit into the realms of philosophy. I do find that a number of scientific ideas are akin to philosophy, and as fascinating as they are, I don't want to get drawn too deeply into that, otherwise this video will end up being several hours long. But then, what is time anyway? An expansion of the self-consistency principle states that since changing the past in a paradoxical manner is impossible, if you were particularly determined to change history, then as you got closer and closer to the impossible event, then more and more improbable events would be put in your way to stop you. This is because even a very, very improbable event would have a much greater probability than an impossible event, which has a probability of zero. So whilst none of these conjectures actually talk about an actual organisation that polices time in order to prevent reality-destroying paradoxes, it may be that the universe does indeed protect itself from the actions of time travellers. Ok, so we need to come back to reality, sadly. The whole concept of wormholes and time travel fascinates me, which is probably why I've been a lifelong Doctor Who fan, and I'm always intrigued to watch and read stories that centre on travel through the fourth dimension. And until I decide to dip my toe into the murky waters of time again, for now, Thank you for watching.